Hello everyone and welcome to the UK's only TV program that's dedicated to your mental health and well-being, The Chrissy B Show. And I'm your host, Chrissy B. Now, what does looking and feeling good mean to you? And do you worry about dressing your age? Well, these are just some questions that have been posed by Dr. Spellman and her team who have been investigating why we buy the clothes we wear. Our very own psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang, will be on hand to give her opinion. And also, feeling good often starts from within. So we have our nutritionists every minute ready to give us some healthy food ideas. And of course, one of the key components to anybody's image is their smile. And here to help us maximize those pearly whites is dentist Dr. Teki Sodani. For our good cause of the week, I'll be speaking to Nick McEwen of children's charity London Play about the many ways in which they are helping children across the city to find safe public places to play. Then, at the end of the show, I'll be giving you my tips on how you can feel good about yourself. According to research by Totally Money, the average individual in the UK is spending almost £4,500 on their looks throughout the year. Further research by Hair Trade found that women were likely to spend £22,000 on beauty products in their lifetime. So social media certainly plays its part in the results, with 45% of those surveyed saying they were unwilling to post a picture on social media without first working on their appearance. But what is this image conscious mentality doing to our mental health? Well, we check Twitter to hear your views. Larry Klein says, don't let looking good mean more to you than actually getting good. Worrying about image holds so many people back. Graeme says, beauty gets worse with age, talents gets better with age. Learn this while you're young and you'll always be looking good. Caroline says, prioritize people's long-term physical and mental health and well-being over their appearance. Glenn says, I'm in a good place. Apparently, my mental health and physical appearance are very closely tied. And Joey says, regardless of your race, religion, sexual orientation, gender identity, mental health or physical appearance, I accept you. And Lina says, I've been sacrificing my mental health for physical appearance. Thank you very much for those comments. And we also do love to hear from you, our viewers, about some past shows that you've maybe watched. And here, viewer Steve remarks on our work with awareness. He says, Krista does a fantastic job in bringing awareness to various health topics. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much for that comment, Steve. And actually, it's teamwork here. Everybody works really hard to raise that awareness. Well, did you know that more than 80% of British women think a new outfit makes them look even older, despite half of us buying clothes to try and look younger? These are amongst the many findings that Harley Street psychologist Dr. Becky Spellman discovered when she conducted research as part of the Seven Seas True Age campaign. Our own Julianne Robertson has been speaking to Dr. Spellman, but first, let's take a look at their experiment. I'm psychologist Dr. Becky Spellman. Seven C's are a vitamin, mineral and supplement brand. We've been asking women across the UK if they act the way they feel or if they act according to their age stereotypes. Seven C's have taken over a clothing store. What a difference. We've labeled all of the clothes with ages rather than sizes. Let's see how our shoppers react. That's as 18 to 24, but I think anybody could wear that. Curious, who decides what we're meant to wear at our age? Why don't they tell me I can't wear this? <laughs> this is your age? Well, that's for you. Well, it's 55, that's too old for me. But does it matter? You're not looking at age, surely. I'm going to stick rigidly to the age. Because oh. it's going to tell me what I look nice in. I want to try them on, but I'm sort of put off by the age label. Should I just try it on anyway, in spite of the age range? Just see how you feel. I'm really grateful that I did try it on because I really, really like it. Time to reveal to the shoppers what this social experiment has really been about. I'm a qualified psychologist and I've been watching your reactions very closely today to see how you feel about age. <laughs> oh, well, I've given that away. <laughs> Would any of you be interested in this as a real concept? I've got a 16-year-old daughter, and she sometimes goes shopping with me. She says, Mum, you can't look at that. I think, why not? And she says, no, 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 because that's for young people. And I'm thinking, well, well who told you that? Mm. I'm going to look at this if I want to look at it. I would like to think that someone would say to me, oh, you can't try that. And I would say, well, it's none of your business anyway, and get on with it. 
It sounds like you're all living your lives in ways where you feel that age is just a number and therefore you're putting across that message to other people and then other people are treating you accordingly. As a psychologist, it was so interesting to see today that most women live the age they feel rather than their real age. And that's exactly what Seven Seas believes in. Be inspired, live your true age. Hi guys, and welcome back to the show. So we've just seen a rather interesting um, video by Dr. Becky Spellman, and we're actually with her today um, to talk about the psychology of like looking good. So Becky, how did you do this research and why did you do it? The research by Seven Seas was to investigate how women really felt about their age when choosing clothing. And it was very interesting because different women had different perspectives on it, yeah. but we really saw that age influenced someone and how, they, how young they felt really influenced their decisions. But also not just what, people didn't go with what they just wanted to wear themselves. It was also about what people thought and uh, they didn't necessarily like embrace what they wanted to wear. People can get really yeah. stuck in in their ways and stuck in certain habits yeah and that was really like illustrated just through like the labels and stuff like that so those predetermined judgments that we all have really showed in that video essentially it's very interesting because certain shops, shops market themselves towards the younger age yeah. group or the older age group and these women were making very subconscious choices before they even walked into the store about whether they were even allowed in the store yeah. in the first place and very concerned about what other people would think. And they were using phrases like, oh, would I be mutton dressed in lamb and this and very conscious about making choices. So when the age labels were on the clothing instead of the sizes, Straight away, they just took that as, am I too old to wear this? Yeah. Would, it, would, it, would it look would it bad be on me? Would it be appropriate? And, um, and then there was one woman who, uh, she looks quite young, so she's used to being told that she looks very young, so she knows she can get away with it. Yeah. And she embraces that. Um, but it was very interesting because people kept asking other people's opinion, you know, do you think I'll be okay? And, um, and, and they were a bit reluctant. They were a bit taken back by the age and a bit reluctant yeah. to just go with what they thought looked good. I find it really funny how we need other people to justify what we do some, some of the time, and that was really like prevalent in that video. Yeah. Um, typically, why do you th think people feel older than they actually are? People are so influenced by social media these days and, and they look at these images in glossy magazines which often have been airbrushed and people are very conscious about being judged about what they'll wear. Um, also people are very conscious about body image and size so a lot of people tend to kind of play it safe um, particularly when they get a bit set in their ways and yeah. as women mature they will often you know wear all black or wear all grey or stick to something that feels safe rather than picking something that makes them feel quite free and really kind of brings out their style and um, and embraces their creativity. Yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot of personality in what we wear. So would you say that by safe, they're kind of just hiding who they are a little bit? A lot of women were sort of saying, oh, I always stick to this or I always stick to that. And it's yeah. like they had forgotten about what they used to really enjoy wearing when they didn't care about when, what people thought. Yeah. A lot of them said that when, when, when they were younger, they didn't really care so much about what people were thinking about what they wore. They yeah. felt more free to just wear anything and didn't have to consider age appropriate clothing. Yeah. But as they've aged, they started to be very conscious about what society thought and what other people thought, even if they don't know those individuals, what are people thinking of, of what I'm wearing? What do you think um, are the reasons why we're so reluctant to try these new styles and outfits? It's interesting because in the comfort of our ho own home, we wear what we love and we wear our comfiest yeah. clothes. And then people, when they go out into the world, can be really scared of what people are saying yeah. and, and how people are judging them. So they like to play it safe. Um, so what I would say to women is just be adventurous. Try things that make you feel good, but maybe feels a bit risky and stop worrying about what people think. And also wear clothes according to your true age. You know, if you feel like a teenager, why not occasionally dress like one? You don't have to, if you're a 50 year old woman, you don't have to dress like you think a 50 year old should dress yeah, exactly. wear something that's fun for you wear the colors you love don't get too stuck in your ways and um, you know wearing a lot of blacks and wearing like grays it is playing it safe but are you having fun in that in that clothing and are you embracing your creativity and and stuff that makes you feel really good yeah. and 
to be honest, like, I mean, I know some people who wear blacks and wear whites and wear grays and they, they're not playing it safe. They're really embracing who they are and their personality as well. Um, so yeah, what would you be your advice for any woman that wants to try out a little bit, like go a little bit past their comfort zone and try whatever they want to wear? Well, that's interesting that you say about people wearing like whites and grays, but they're being adventurous. And I'm thinking even like pieces of jewelry can be quite bold yeah. and, and quite adventurous. Yeah. So I would say to people, live your true age and not your real age. And by, tr by true age, what yeah. I mean is the age that we feel on the inside, dress according to that rather than your chronological uh, age on your birth cert um, and, and see how that feels for you because it can be really fun to not go according to what you think society wants you to do. That's just all incredibly fascinating, Becky. Well, um, yeah, guys, I think the moral of the story is we just need to be a bit more adventurous with our clothing and more risky and just take that, like, take that extra step to be a bit more confident. Um, Live your yeah. true age, so the age you feel, rather than the age on your birth cert. Exactly. Live your true age. Thanks again, Dr. Becky. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Back to you, Chrissy. Thank you very much, Julianne and Dr. Spellman. Well, after the break, I'll be hearing our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang's opinion on why we spend so much on our appearance. And dentist, Dr. Teki Sodani, will be giving me his tips on how to make the most of your smile. But first, we have a quiz for you. Which of these cities spends the most per year on their looks? Is it A, Leeds, B, Liverpool, or C, London? Do you know the answer to this question? Find out after this break. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, everyone, your TV program for all things related to mental health and well-being. So before the break, I asked you which of these cities spends the most per year on their looks. Is it A, Leeds, B, Liverpool or C, London? The answer is A, Leeds, where people typically spend the most on teeth whitening services and dermatologists at £587 per year. Well, here to help us understand the relationship between our physical appearance and mental health a little better is our resident psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang. Hello, welcome Hello. back to the show. Thank you very much. The lovely new hairstyle. Oh, yeah, thank you. Love Talk it. Talk about appearance. Yes. <laughs> thank you. So how does it feel having a new hairstyle and a new... I really makeup? like it, but hair's one of those things where if it's a bad hair day, you feel it. Yes, it's Because that's true. the first thing people notice. It's it, true. It's, again, appearance, it's... We, it takes us between three to seven seconds to make a judgment on somebody and that's why appearances do become so important to okay. us. So all yeah, right. it's a it's great show that you've all got right. here. <laughs> so uh, first of all, before we sort of get into more of what you're going to speak about today, mm. Audrey, what did you think of Dr. Spellman's findings earlier? I was really happy to watch that video because yeah. it was so nice to see that people weren't put off by labels and actual, uh, in actual fact they were saying, well, even though it says this age group, I'm going to try on anyway yeah. and it's nice to know that people are dressing because they feel good in what they're wearing yeah. not because somebody said oh after a certain age you can't wear this or you can wear that which yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of blogs a lot of fashionistas all telling us that women over 40 shouldn't wear this women over 50 shouldn't wear that there are some yeah. things which make sense for example Plain black can be a draining color, so yeah. it may be worth dressing that up with it with something bright. But on the whole, you've got to wear what you feel comfortable in, yeah, and that's yeah. really important. Okay, and why do you think appearance is so important for people, Audrey? It's largely because we are quite quick to make a judgment. Okay. We always tell people, yeah, well, one of the things I tell people is, in fact, to, to dress for the message you're trying to put across. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily dress for anyone in particular, because at the end of the day, it's either people who understand fashion, or it does tend to be women, who notice what people are wearing and who okay. notice um, the, uh, any little change. But largely, if you are trying to put a certain message across, then it sometimes helps to dress appropriately for that message because mm -hmm. your body language, the way you are physically, does contribute to what people remember. So sometimes there is an element of having to dress specifically. Yeah. Research has also shown that um, if we dress smartly, it tends to improve co uh, cognitive function as well. Really? Really strange. Wow. They had people um, do a few sort of IQ type tests, yeah. um, dress casually and dress in a business suit, and the business suits outperformed casual wow. dressing. That's interesting. It, it is, yeah. it is. And again, there seems to be no logical reason for that. 
but it might just be that when we dress in a certain way, we start thinking in that particular way. Okay, it's really interesting. And obviously I think more people now are spending more money on their appearance than, than before. They are, but a lot of that has to do with the social media culture mm -hmm. as well, because we see what other people are wearing, we see what they're doing, and so because of that, we tend to want to be like that person. Or if we're going to put something on our own profile, we worry about how that's going to be judged. I mean, I know some platforms have got a, a lot of what they call trolling going on, yes, where people yeah, deliberately yeah. say something nasty Mm -hmm. just to wind someone up but again that's usually a judgment based on appearance or judge uh, based on what what yeah. people see mm -hmm. the other thing that's interesting about how we appear is something called the halo and horns effect um, sometimes if somebody's dressed very well or somebody perceives you as being attractive you're also perceived in the halo effect as having all the other positive qualities as well so okay. looking good can have its advantages yeah. However, unfortunately, and this is a real shame to have read this piece of research, it does tend to be for women, if they perceive another woman as looking attractive, they tend to allocate the horns effect, really? which is the jealousy, is the whole, oh, she oh, must no. be really horrible. Yeah. <laughs> She's got no personality <laughs> because she looks so beautiful. So psychologically, there's a lot of fun ways of kind of dealing with appearance and things that we do, that wow. when we see somebody, we do make these, these judgments. Okay. So obviously there is a lot of pressure for people to, to look good, but how can a person actually feel good about themselves without depending too much on the outside? One of the most important things to recognize is that feeling good Good is a state it's not a goal we can choose mm. to feel good at any point I can yeah, sit here and I can put one if, if even if I can't think of something that makes me smile I can put a pencil between my teeth yeah get my face into that that smile um, sort of pose and my brain actually doesn't necessarily know the difference between a fake smile and a real smile because okay. the muscles are doing exactly the same thing. What we do tend to do is we tend to say things like, oh, if I get the job, I'm going to be happy, or if I, get, if I achieve a goal, I'm going to be happy. Well, actually, you don't need to wait till you've achieved that goal because happiness is a state. And so okay. if we can start thinking about how do we get ourselves into that happiness state, why wait? till we've exactly. achieved that. Why yeah. wait until we've bought whatever it is? We can actually be that now. I mean, yeah. one of the most important things, and I do read a lot of these, these blogs about mm -hmm. what you should wear, what you shouldn't wear, all of those things. The one most important thing I would say about women to not wear is you mustn't wear the weight of the world on your shoulders. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one, Audrey. <laughs> Great, it's, it's so true. Yeah, like, that's the yeah. only thing I would say don't wear. <laughs> Brilliant. Audrey, thank you so much. And Pleasure. we'll see you again next week. Yes. Thank you. Right guys, so of course one of the key components to anybody's image is their smile and we heard earlier how much money people in some areas of the UK are spending on teeth whitening. Well here to help us maximise our smiles is Dr Teki Sodani. Welcome to the show, Teki. Thank you for having me on, Chrissy. Brilliant. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do, first of all, before I start firing questions at you, you. <laughs> about smiles? Uh, so so I'm, a, I'm a dentist uh, working in Essex and South East London, yeah. and uh, I see a whole range of uh, different patients for different types of treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, more recently, I've been uh, seeing a lot more people asking me to improve uh, the way that they smile. Okay. So I've been helping people achieve that more recently. Brilliant. And why is it you, you think maybe that people are afraid to smile? What's the main reason, would you say? Uh, I think there's a few reasons for it. I think the, the first thing is that they might not be confident with uh, their teeth. So mm -hmm. some people have uh, missing teeth if their teeth aren't straight or if they're discoloured, that yeah. can uh, lead to people uh, smiling less. And actually there's research that shows that people that um, aren't happy with their smile uh, actually feel less confident and less attractive. Okay. And, and do you think um, that, I suppose, we tend to warm to people more that have a, maybe a nice smile? Uh, there is research to show that and um, with, from a from personal experience, I, one of the, the best things about my job is to see people grow in confidence mm -hmm. and um, get their new job or go get down a different career path and meet new partners yeah. after um, gaining the smile that they like. And how about sort of the influence of social media? Because maybe some people actually have very nice smiles but they think they don't because of what they see out there, do you think? Yeah, I, yeah, I do see that a lot more of that. We, uh, a common thing when we have patients and I ask them, I say, can you show me 
um, some of these teeth that you like and actually a few years ago people would tend to go for a famous celebrity or a Hollywood actor or actress yeah. but now actually a lot of the time they pick up one of their friends on Instagram or Facebook really? and show me I want teeth like hers. Okay, does anyone ask you for something unrealistic or are you... A lot, a lot of the time people are unrealistic but what I try and promote is actually improving uh, the smile but without okay. compromising the health of the teeth okay. so if we can achieve both then uh, that's my job done well that's a good dentist then if you do that because obviously definitely yeah. and, and, yeah. I th and I think traditionally yeah. um, this was done in a way where the teeth were compromised and um, people were left with problems later on in life yeah. whereas now we're quite lucky there's a lot more uh, non-invasive uh, treatments that we can do now mm -hmm. that people uh, can can fit into their lifestyle. Okay, so you do a lot of teeth whitening, don't you? So the most, yeah, the, yeah but one of the most um, a common cosmetic procedures that we do is tooth whitening, mm -hmm. and the reason for that again is because it's non-invasive, so we're not damaging the teeth, yeah. provided it's done by a dental professional. Okay. Um, and actually, now the products are so good that you're getting less and less sensitivity before people will put off because yeah. uh, it could actually make the teeth quite sensitive yeah so it's, it's become very popular now yes okay and what about the other procedures that so the, are popular the, now? and, and, and the uh, procedure that I'm seeing a lot more of and, mm -hmm. and treating a lot more patients with is, is clear braces um, okay. and traditionally we were using metal fixed braces I had them myself when I was a teenager yeah, <laughs> had, had four teeth taken out it's a familiar story I did as well for <laughs> but, but, ac but actually retainers weren't worn as well or dentists weren't recommending them to yeah. wear them as as much as we do now so people's teeth have moved back so about half of the patients that I see have what we call relapse where their teeth have moved back and they just need slightly slight correction and myself included so all yeah. the treatments that I like to do I've had done myself okay. so I don't know if you can tell but I'm wearing it at the minute Chrissy oh, okay. so this is Invisalign yeah. so this is the treatment oh, that I'm having oh. and yeah. I brought one of the um, aligners to show you yeah okay so you basically just so it's, so it's all planned digitally, so you have a scan okay. done of your teeth yeah. and then a 3D model is made and I can uh, arrange the teeth how we want them to be based okay. on your uh, smile and your lips etc. Yeah. Uh, then you have a series of these aligners printed, so you yeah. may have, I had 20 for example, and you wear each one all the time, take yeah. it out for eating and cleaning. Um, and then you'll change it every two weeks. Okay. So it's, it's, yeah, it looks a lot better than what we used to have back in the day. And, and, it so and, painful, and it's like. fitting in with a lot of um, lifestyles. So now we, you know, I'm treating footballers and and uh, celebrities yeah. as well because it fits in with their uh, TV work. So it's becoming very, very popular. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. okay. And any other new things that are out there, take it that you can tell us about? Yeah, I get the other thing that uh, people are. A lot more uh, conscious of is their is their breath. Actually, we're getting a lot of people that ask, you know, what the causes of bad breath. And I like the, the way that patients are more educated now about their oral health. Yeah. Um, so there's new products that are always coming out from good companies mm -hmm. uh, and actually I like to test them out myself and also um, okay. get the patients to try them. So take one last question, What's, what would be your top tip for a healthy smile? Uh, my top tip would be to, to use your smile more regular and uh, see it as a muscle. The more you use it, the better it will be. And if you aren't happy with your smile, um, see your dentist and discuss the options because there are lots of good ways of uh, being able to do that now. Brilliant, thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you, thanks for having me. And all the best for the future, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, so don't go away because after the break, we have our nutritionist, Severi Menem, who'll be discussing how our obsession with looking good can often have a damaging impact on our diet, as well as answering your nutrition questions and giving us a recipe for a refreshing mango salsa. But first, what percentage of British people feel they're in good health? Is it A, 47%, B, 58%, or C, 66%? Find out right after this break. CB and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10pm on my channel Sky203. 
Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone, where today has been all about the psychology of looking good. And before the break, I asked you what percentage of British people feel they're in good health? Is it A, 47%, B, 58%, or C, 66%? The answer is C, 66%, according to research by Ipsos, ranking us ninth highest in the world, with South Africa, US, and India taking the top spots. Well, if you're one of the ones who aren't so sure about the state of your health, listen up because here I have the lovely nutritionist Severine Menon with me who's going to give some more nutrition tips for the body conscious. Welcome back to the show, Severine. Thank you. Lovely to have you back on. Great to be back. <laughs> so Severine, do you think there's actually a link between what we eat and the clothes that we wear? I think it, there is actually, especially when you're a woman, you know, if you're going to wear a tight dress, yeah. usually you're not going to have a massive portion of pasta or pizza because you tend to bloat. Yes. You, you you're going to look at, um, at a nice salad with some lean chicken and, and okay. feel like very, very good about your body. Okay. And you can see that actually when you go out, you know, at lunchtime and, and look, you know, how women are dressed and what they, what they have. And it, it usually goes in pair, I think. Don't you think? Have you yeah, noticed? I mean, I, I have. But I'm just thinking, I'm laughing because I had a massive bowl of spaghetti bolognese before I came on. <laughs> but it's because I've got a t-shirt Yeah, but look, everything. you know, I've got a kind of a loose t-shirt. So you can, you can I've do I've had strategies. That. Yes. And a stretchy uh, pair of yeah. trousers, maybe. <laughs> Severine, you know, sometimes no matter what people do for the outside, they yes. still don't feel very good about themselves. You know, they have, yes. have the cosmetic surgery, they yes. plus themselves in makeup, uh, you know, all those mm -hmm. kind of outside things. But obviously, mm -hmm. if they're not looking after the inside, they're still yes. not going to feel great about themselves. Absolutely. Are they? they might have a brain fog or feeling bloated or low energy. Yeah. yeah. That's very common, actually. Okay. And the only uh, solution is to eat right. Yes. And start with lots of vegetables. Lots of vegetables, which I can see here. Well, yes. What are you going to be making today? So Sydney? today I'm going to make one of my favorite um, salad, which is actually a mango salsa. And I love it mm. because of all the f um, colors and flavors. And yes. I hate it because it takes forever to prepare everything <laughs> in small dice. It is dice. Um, you can get someone to do the chopping for you, maybe. Well, yes, I wish. But my son is too young and my husband is usually you know, uh, at work when I'm preparing dinner. So. Okay. Um, what we have nine different ingredients and they're okay. all perfect for something so okay. the first one would be cucumber mm -hmm. and cucumber is green so it's a nice color but it's full of water yeah so it's all about hydration very hydrating yep very important to be hydrated lots of people feel bad about themselves because they don't have it um, they're not hydrating enough which means that okay. they have headache they feel tired yeah. they feel they like energy and sometimes most of the time it's just because they don't drink enough water Wow. Okay. so that's a good solution brilliant next one is mango so my favorite really yes I love mango oh, oh. My Yes, I love that too. So it's sweet, um, obviously. It's yellow, obviously. Um, it could, it gives this, um, yeah, little touch of um, uh, tropical exotism um, to the salad, yes. and um, full of vitamins, obviously. Then we have the green, another green, um, avocado, yes. full of very, very healthy fats. Lovely. That's another one of my favorites. That's yeah, that's amazing. Now that fats have been re habilitating, you know, being able to enjoy yeah. avocado yes. without having the guilt is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Um, we're moving to the red bits. So tomatoes, mm -hmm. tomatoes really good. Um, they're actually probably better uh, cooked because when they're mm. cooked, they release some lycopene, lycopene. Okay. Um, but um, if they're like that, they're also good. Um, okay. Lots of vita vitamins. I didn't know that about tomatoes. Yes. Oh, well, that's, that's why Italians, you know, they cook all the, the tomato sauce because of oh. that. Um, and the peppers, red peppers. So I'm not going to mix it yet because we're going to move to the more um, um, to the garlic and red onions. The smelly stuff now. The smelly that's stuff. Very good for you. The very, very good stuff. So antioxidant, yes. antimicrobial, antifungal. Basically, every time you've got something wrong, if yeah. you have some raw garlic and raw onion uh, or raw honey, you know, yeah, you're pretty sure that it's okay. going to get better. Brilliant. 
So yeah, that. Um, then you've got the parsley, also for vitamin C, and also it gives so much flavor. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. And then as a, as a dressing, um, you've got several options. I like the lime. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also um, do some kind of dressing with lime and olive oil and salt, you know, it depends okay. um, yeah. what varies I, I like well, to Well, there's quite a few flavours in there already, so yes. maybe you don't really need any oil or yes. anything in there. Well, you have to try and, yeah. and you have to, you know, yeah, try different options and, and see what you like. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. And what is best for this uh, salsa is actually to prepare it in advance and to leave it in the fridge for, um, let's say, an hour. Oh, really? Because then okay. all the flavors meet together and it's beautiful and it tastes amazing. As I say, wow. it's, it's one of my favorite salads to do, but you have to have it. What would you, what would, would you have it on its own, would you say, Severine, or, or was it, would you pair it with something? No, we'd pair it with some, um, with some protein, so maybe grilled uh, salmon or chicken breast or, or prawns. You know, okay. it's, it's summer, so you can be a bit uh, more exotic now. Yeah. And yes. So See, I tend, I tend not to put mangoes in anything, really. I just have them like, just like that. Yes, me but too. But it, look, it looks I so try nice. not to add too much sweet into the um, savory dishes, yeah. but this one is just amazing. But it, it smells really delicious it does. as well. Yeah, the flavors are just like. And usually, you know, I, I can't say too fast, but when I have this salsa, I eat a lot more slowly because of all the flavors. <laughs> you know, you never know on which bit you're going to, to end and yeah. end just, yeah. But yeah. So that looks really like amazing. To try. Okay, I'm trying not to get the garlic. <laughs> Even though I actually love garlic. Oh, okay, yeah, it's, um, it's tricky. You should have told me I would have left it on the side. Just mm -hmm. okay. mm. Yes, that is it worth nice. it? Mm -hmm. Cool. The, the, I don't know, it's just the way that the flavours go together. You wouldn't yes. think they would, but they, it's tasting. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't expect that. It's lovely. Yeah, I just I've got to try this at home. <laughs> Severine, before you go, we have some yes. questions from the viewers. Yeah, of course. Okay, let's see what people are asking this week. Okay. So this person is saying, I'm part of a competition to lose mm. as much weight in six weeks as possible. Do you have any tips? Okay. Um, how do I say it in a nice way? Um, why do you really want to win this competition? Because in six weeks, if you're really trying to lose the most weight possible, um, the likeliness of damaging your health is pretty high. Okay. Uh, so I, ethically, I can't recommend anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I can only say that if you want to lose weight, there is only the long term. Um, lifestyle changes that can work. Okay, so it's very unhealthy basically to do it this way. Yes. Okay. It is. I'm not going to suggest anything. I'm, okay. I'm sorry about that. You know, I have to be honest here. But to basically do it the healthy way, like you know, as you said, change your yeah your lifestyle rather than having yes these short -term um, goals, I suppose. Yes, because if you, if you want to just lose weight for six weeks, I mean, for the six weeks time, and then putting back on, yeah. you're just that's the perfect thing to do. You know, just do it, and then you'll see. You know, probably even put more back. Um, more weight it's on back. It's true actually, I do yes. notice that with people when they go on these crazy crash diets yes. or just drink liquids or whatever, they lose really fast yes. but then everyone that I know that's done that, they, they're bigger now than they were when they started. Uh, yeah, so um, basically when you reduce your number of calories or whatever you're doing, yeah. usually the body think that it's a starvation mode. Yes. And then when you eat again, because obviously it's not meant to be starving for the long term, then the body uh, doesn't understand that, and, and so you put back on weight. Okay, so naughty, naughty, don't do that, guys. No. So, next question, is diet tea good for you? Okay, that's another thing that I would not recommend, because diet tea doesn't mean anything, and most people think that herbs are okay, but they're not. They're very potent. They can be very dangerous. So if you have diet tea now and then, I think, yeah, it's okay. But if you have consistently diet tea or a huge amount of diet tea, I would be uh, careful on not damaging organs like kidney mm -hmm. that has to process wow. all, all, all the drinks that you do, yes. Okay, oh, that's good. So I would not around. recommend that. No. Again. But Herbal teas, though. In oh, general, herbal tea, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good herbal for you. tea, yeah. Great, but diet tea, no. There's a difference, right? Yes. Brilliant. Good to know. And this person, Severine, is asking I find myself sweating when I haven't eaten. Is that a sign of diabetes? Okay, um, I don't know how long is not eaten, if it's overnight mm. or if it's just in between meals. 
Uh, so I can't really say, and I'm not a GP, so I can't diagnose, but mm. sweating is not normal. It can be diabetes or it can be something else, okay. but the best thing to do is to go to the GP and get checked. Okay. Um, diabetes, I mean, testing for diabetes is just a blood test, and they would tell you. Um, if it's type 2 diabetes, the really good news is by changing the diet, you can reverse it. Okay. It's That's not good. advertised enough, but it yeah. is possible. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, um, just, just get it checked. I mean, you can heal so many things just by yes. eating right, can't you? Yes, Sabrina? you can. And I think the NHS is not advertising that enough. Yeah, so we need but to we... all eat right, guys, right? Okay. Well, better would be a good step. Better, yeah. <laughs> And it's small steps sometimes, isn't yes, it? Yes, and sometimes it's just, it's just you know, eating more vegetable and fruits and then you don't feel like eating the same thing and you're drinking more water and then, you know, it's just like one yeah, step. Step, and, step and then you go a very long way. Lovely. Severine, thank you so much. Thank I'm going to be digging into this salad afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> thank me too. You. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> guys, if you'd like to know more about Severine, you can head over to our website, chrissybshow.tv. And also, if you have a question for one of our nutritionists, you can um, email us on nutrition at chrissybshow.tv Right guys, so shortly I'll be joined by Nick McEwen of this week's Good Cause, London Play, and I'll be giving you my tips on how you can feel good about yourself. But first, which of these physical traits is claimed to be tied with cancer risk? Is it A, shoe size, B, finger length, or C, eye colour? Do you know the answer? Tune in after the break to find out. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show everyone, the TV program that looks after your mental health and well-being. Now before the break I asked you which of these physical traits is claimed to be tied with cancer risk. Is it A, shoe size, B, finger length or C, eye colour? The answer is B, the length of your fingers, particularly in men according to the British Journal of Cancer which found that having a longer index finger than ring finger was associated with lower cancer risk. Now, as you know, we are always on the hunt for good causes to feature on our show. And now I'm delighted to be joined by Nick McEwen of children's charity London Play. Welcome to the show, Nick. Thank you for having me. Lovely to have you on. So tell us, what is London Play and how did you get involved personally? So London Play is a local charity. In fact, our office is just up the road, about okay. two minutes from here. Mm -hmm. um, and we started in 1998 with the aim of making sure that every child in London has somewhere safe, um, to play and somewhere yeah. of, of high quality. Okay. Um, we worked a lot with adventure playgrounds at the beginning. Okay. Um, so just to clarify, adventure playgrounds are not the kind of metal and plastic playgrounds yeah. that you might find in a park. Mm -hmm. They're really special places. They're dotted all over London. Okay. There are about 80 at the moment. Um, and they're staffed by qualified play workers. They're big structures, usually wooden, quite higgledy-piggledy. Okay. Um, and they are ruled by children, really. So if they want to change that space or destroy it or recreate it, oh. that they're allowed to, which means they don't really get bored with them. And how did you get involved in this charity? So I so. run one of the projects. Oh. Um, I run a project called Playworks, and mm. my role is supporting um, play workers and playgrounds to improve their skills in monitoring and evaluating their social impact. Okay. So they can talk more confidently about the amazing work they do and, mm -hmm. and get funding because that's okay, what brilliant. they need. And yeah. why is it so important that children have these outdoor and safe places to, to play? Yeah, um, it's incredibly important that children have access to safe places to play. Mm -hmm. um, I think increasingly they're limited by um, parental fears of, yeah. for example, traffic on the roads mm -hmm. or um, our perhaps slightly inflated fear of stranger danger. Mm -hmm. um, and there are fewer and fewer places for them to play outside. The okay. benefits of play are, are unquestionable. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really how we as humans learn about the world around mm -hmm. us. It develops our cognitive capacity, mm -hmm. um, it improves our social skills. Mm -hmm. Children who play are more confident, they're happier. Um, healthy, happy kids are more likely to be healthy, happy yeah, adults, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. How really does it compare to 10 years ago, would you say, like the way children sort of play and entertain? Themselves? So at the moment um, in the UK, um, one in five children won't play outside. Really? Yeah, so that's about 300,000 just in London. Wow. Um, and that's, 
if you think of so those dangers and the worries that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, but increased sedentary hobbies like television yeah. or um, computer games, uh, children don't go outside as much as they used to. And so the, the impact of that in the long term, if you look at the, the kind of spike in obesity, the spike in mm -hmm. mental health problems like low self-esteem, anxiety, depression, yeah. um, more serious conditions as well, like type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. All those things happen in later life and it's the kind of, um, the kind of problems that play can help prevent okay. at an earlier stage. So. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I was outside all the time, yeah. on my bike, up and down, up and down yeah, the road. Same. I couldn't go past like the, the end of the road, I wasn't allowed to, but I was just out all the time, yeah. or even the garden even. That's it, and, it's, yeah. and you mentioning streets, I think is really important because mm -hmm. one of the things that we do is um, support communities and neighborhoods to, to, to shut down a street for the day and create a play street so oh, that the local children idea. can play. It's been wow. really popular. It started in 2011, and now we've got yeah. 26 councils on board. So that's amazing! Yeah. Wow. I suppose that's a lot. That's sort of really for parents as well, because they don't have to worry, you know, so much. Because yeah. it's a bit safer, isn't it, to shut down and Absolutely. just because everyone's sort of aware that the kids are everyone's out. Everyone's there, and, stuff. and then yeah. you've also got like the intergenerational benefits that come from that. So just even neighbours meeting each other and the community yeah. being stronger. Okay, yeah. and tell us about these, these more, a bit more about these adventure playgrounds. So they're, they're dotted everywhere. I've yeah. never, I don't know if I've ever seen one. Yeah, there's Is there one in Finsbury in, Park? There's one in Tottenham. There's not yeah. one in Finsbury, but there okay. used to be more. So we, we still have in London the most adventure playgrounds okay. in the world. And it's, as I said, it's around 80, yeah. um, but they are dwindling. They're often in um, areas of, of quite high social deprivation. Okay. Um, and they're the most magical places i mean that's yeah. when i first heard about london play it was because i'd stumbled across an adventure playground really? and started researching them okay. um, and yeah i've never really been anywhere and anywhere like them there's a list yeah. of them on our website so you can find that and they're okay. free i think that's oh, so i was going to really ask you actually can people yeah. just go there anytime absolutely and like, yeah okay. each each one is different um and they'll have their own kind of age restrictions but in general it tends to be kind of five or six to about 14, 15 years old that you can go. That's amazing. Um, and they're real community hubs mm. because I think they, they offer um, a sort of safe space for parents as well to come and, and get advice or you know, informal guidance and stuff. So Brilliant. they're quite special. Okay, yeah. they sound amazing. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go and check one out myself You do, now. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and in terms of if the public wants to get involved and help your charity in any way, what can, what can they do? If you wanted to start a play street, um, then you could get in touch with us and we would yeah. give you some free advice about that. Okay. Um, you could enter a team into our go-kart design, build and race, which the next, one, <laughs> the next one is on the 4th of um, August. What's that about? What so teams entered, just uh, teams of children, yeah. and then yeah, they have an afternoon, normally about three hours, mm -hmm. a big pile of wood, some power tools and adult supervision. Okay, okay. I was going to um, say that. And they build, play, they build uh, go karts sorry, from, from scratch and then race them. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Really fun. <laughs> Do you get involved it's in that? It's as chaotic <laughs> as it sounds. I feel really this is a job for you. <laughs> no, absolutely. I think you should come along. I feel like you'd be good with, with the power yeah. tool. Yeah. Oh, wow. That sounds really good. <laughs> any other projects that are happening as well that you can tell us about? So many. Yeah, so many. So. Um, as well as the work that we're doing, kind of supporting adventure playgrounds, we also support them by recognising how amazing they are. So every year we run um, the annual Adventure Playground Awards. This oh. is our 18th year. Um, that's a, also quite a crazy event, but you'd be yeah. more than welcome to go. Okay. <laughs> um, the play streets, that's kind of bringing play to the community on a smaller level, but we're yeah. also looking at a project called Play Quarters, which expands it to, to the entire neighborhood. So wow. we really want to build neighborhoods of um, people who, who believe in, in the positive benefits of play yeah. um, and who can support children to be much more independent in roaming their, their local um, neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. We also build playgrounds, um, so we work oh, with wow. uh, schools and uh, councils and local communities to create mm -hmm. new play spaces. Um, and you guys we're are working, very busy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and we're also working increasingly with schools. That's a really that's kind of a new thing for us. But okay. we recognise that to, to try and get more children playing outside 
they mm. spend the majority of their time in school so we want to make schools more, more playful places to be in as well yeah, so definitely. we're, we're collaborating brilliant ideas amazing yeah. work thank you so much Nate, for coming Such and telling us all about london play all right guys so now it's time for my tips on how to feel good about yourself so let's get straight to these tips my first point is to value the things that you already have so think about the people that you have in your life the things that you have already and the good things about yourself as well because you know as we know people do compare we've talked about social media on the program today it is a very sort of dark thing to sort of fall into if you're just comparing yourself and not uh, realizing what you do have going for you so if it helps write down a list of all the good things that you have in your life the people the things the your, maybe your house the fact that you've got food to eat and the nice things about your appearance as well i'm sure there's great things about you that maybe you're not appreciating enough the second point is to recognize that life isn't fair and, and what do I mean by that? Um, I'm not saying that you should just sort of, you know, if problems are happening and things aren't going right, that you should just accept things as they are. But the thing, the, the point is that we are born, we, we don't have a choice about where we're born, the kind of conditions we're born into, the country we're born into, all this, you know, sometimes people say, oh, but I was born poor, I was born in, in this country and, you know, it was very difficult there. Okay, you know, maybe your circumstances were very difficult, but it doesn't mean that you can't change things. If you, if you keep your thinking about oh life's not fair life's not fair you will never get out of that cycle and you're never going to feel good about yourself but if you actually stop wasting your time and energy and fo and focus on you know wishing things that they were that were actually different and you let go of all the anger that maybe you're feeling you can actually start thinking of ways to better your life and better your circumstances the next point is only compete with yourself uh, again, this goes back to my comparison point earlier. You know, I mean, Audrey mentioned it as well about the way uh, certain women might react when they see someone that another woman that looks good. They tend to get jealous and they start to uh, compare themselves to that person, which is such a negative thing. So regardless of whether it's appearance or whether it's maybe uh, things that person's achieving at work, don't look at what others are doing. If you're going to look at others, do it in a way that, you know, you can learn from them or get inspired by them, but not in a way that you end up putting yourself down and you start feeling jealous towards that person. That's not healthy at all. So set the goals, the kind of goals that you set should be to improve yourself. So maybe there's certain things that you've done or um, that you've achieved and now you're actually going to uh, think to yourself okay now I have a goal to achieve more than that this time or or take it a step further this time so that way there's no there's not too much pressure because you know people are different they've bought like you know they have different circumstances you shouldn't compare yourself to others because you don't know what's going on in their own mind and what they've been through as well the next point is don't fret about the things you can't change uh, again this one's very important there there are certain things that we cannot change uh, all right in terms of appearance for example of course there's always plastic surgery but say you can't actually afford that and you're not so happy with your look don't there's certain things that you can't change about yourself so, and there's times when we well not there's times actually we always need to accept that but what can you change what things can you do better in with your appearance with maybe um, your your financial situation at the moment there are certain things that you can do but if you're again if you're focusing all your energy on the things that you can do nothing about you're going to feel drained and have no energy whatsoever so just concentrate on the things that you can do yourself and don't worry about the things that you can't next point is have goals of course this one is very very important um, you're not going to feel good about yourself if you're not if you don't feel like you're achieving anything so it's very very important that you have goals that you have something to work towards that does actually boost your self-esteem and the last one which I think is very important is to be kind to others we uh, sometimes underestimate the impact that being nice to others and helping other people can have on our own well-being and you know everyone feels good when they've helped someone especially if you've helped someone and not you know you're not expecting anything in return which nowadays unfortunately is very rare so if you just concentrate on just being nice to people being helpful without expecting anything back you'll see how much happier you're going to feel inside well, everyone, we have reached the end of today's program. But don't forget, if you would like to be involved in the show, 
please do get in touch with us. As I said, we do love to hear from our viewers, whether it's an opinion you have or whether you'd like to contribute to the program in some way. You can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at chrissybshow or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Until next time, bye-bye for now. Well, these are just some questions that have been posed by Dr. Spellman and her team who have been investigating... Sorry? I heard someone's voice. I thought I heard something, sorry. Uh, my, my top tip is to actually to, to uh, use it regularly. So if you th see it like a muscle, the more you use it, uh, the better it will be. What, what do you use? What, sorry? Your smile. Oh, your smile. <laughs> <laughs> so I smile more. Thank you for that comment. And actually it's a team effort. Everybody here really works hard, so thank you. Well, if, oh no. Hang on, what, what are you going to do?